Greetings everyone, this is Jim Todd with Song Surgeon and in this week's video tip we're going to look at the options that a user of Song Surgeon has when they have a file open on their screen. And you can see in this example here I've got three different loops set up and I've got a couple of markers, actually three markers set up. And so let's discuss our options here. Well first of all if we know we're never going to need or use or open this file again you may just want to close it and lose all of our settings and not worry about it. So that's certainly one option, which is to do nothing. The second option is that if we want to apply the changes, and in this case we have this looping area at one speed, this second loop at a second speed, and this third loop at a third speed. If we want to do embed these changes into the file, and have them stored in this file permanently, we would export and we would create a new file by exporting the entire song. And that would embed the changes that we made in these looping areas in the new file. And there are some advantages to that. Obviously, if you embed these changes, you can take that file that you create on export to any other device, any other player, and when you play it back, those changes will be embedded permanently. Um, what are the disadvantages? Well, really the only disadvantage is then you'll have the old file on your machine before you made these changes and then when you create this new file you have a second file and so you might have two files on your machine unless you wanted to go ahead and then delete the old file once you created this new one. Your third option then is to actually save this, not export it, but save it as a project file. And if we save it as a project file, it saves all of the settings. It saves the loop settings as well as the changes that we made to this loop. It saves these markers up here. Essentially it remembers all of this and then the next time you go to open the project file, it will open the underlying audio and it will apply all of these same settings and open it up on your screen and it will look just like it looks right now. So what are the benefits to that? Well, the benefit is, number one, that if you're going to use this file that you've created and open it up and use it multiple times, it would make a lot of sense to have this as a project file so you don't have to recreate all these loops and all these markers each time that you open it. Number two, when you save it as a project file, a project file is a very small file. It's a couple of kilobytes because we're not storing any audio in the project file. All we're really doing is remembering the path to where that audio file is on your machine and reopening that audio file at some point in the future and applying all these settings again. So those are the benefits to using a project file. Are there any negatives? Well, the biggest negative is that when you take a project file that you've created on one machine and you move it to another machine, you may very well have problems opening that file and we'll talk about those at the end of this video. The last option that you have then is you can also create what we call a portable project file. So in this case you could do export and then portable song surgeon project. Now what are the advantages of that? Well the advantages of that are that when we create that portable project file we don't store the path to the underlying audio file. We actually store the audio file in the project file. So that means that this project file becomes portable for you and you can move it from one machine to another. Well, you may be thinking, well, that's great. That's what I should do all the time. And that's not necessarily true because the big downside to using a portable project file is it takes time to create it, although that's not a lot of time. It might be, you know, 20 extra seconds. But the bigger issue is if you create a portable project file, you're going to create something with a WAV file embedded into it. And that means it's going to be fairly large. In addition to that, the other negative is that you have created or will create two copies of the audio files. So those are the four options you have when you open a file on your computer. You can either close it and dump all the data and forget about it. You can export, create a new file and embed any changes. You can create a portable Song Surgeon project file which is truly portable between machines or you can just create a project file and that project file is a terrific way to go as long as you're staying on the same machine. 
But if you plan on moving to a different machine, or if at some point in the future it's likely that you may need to buy a new machine, you're going to encounter perhaps some problems when you move your song children project files. And let's take the last couple of minutes here and just briefly look at that. On my screen now, you can see a project file, a .ssp file that I've opened. And you can open an SSP file as well. Use a text editor like WordPad or Notepad. Or if you're on a Mac, um, there's something called Text Edit, I believe. Any of those text editors will work just fine. You open it up. What you can see is that it records the pitch or the tempo settings. It records any EQ changes, vocal reduction changes, a bunch of other things that it remembers to reapply all of these settings. But here's the thing I want to focus your attention to right here, the audio file path. So when it reopens a project in Song Surgeon, it looks for this file, this WAV file, and it has to be in this path because that's where the project file found it the first time and that's the location it's stored. So if you were to delete this file or move it to a different location, or if you move your SSP files to a new computer, if this path is not exactly the same and if there is not a file with exactly this name, when you open a project file, Song Surgeon won't know where to find this underlying file and it's not going to be able to open it. So that's the biggest drawback and the biggest negative to using an SSP file. Now, I'm not trying to convince you not to use SSP files. A lot of people do and they're very useful, but you just have to understand that if you move from one computer to another, you buy a new computer and the file structure is different, and it's likely that it will be because no two computers are set up the same, you're going to encounter this problem. Now, you can reproduce these paths exactly on your new computer, and it's probably not a huge deal to do, but it is going to be some work. But bottom line is that is the nature of a project file. It doesn't contain the audio file. It simply stores a path to it, just like it stores or remembers all of these other settings. And that's why when you move to a new computer, this issue arises where you try to open a project file and it won't open because it can't find the underlying audio file. Uh, hopefully this review of the different options that you have for dealing with files once you've opened them in Song Surgeon has been helpful. And with that, we'll conclude this weekly video tip.